political commentator Herson Barrera. Thank you both for being here. So let's start with the departures at City Hall. At this point, it seems almost everyone who has been touched by these federal investigations is out or on their way out at City Hall. So Ben, what does all this mean for the mayor? I mean, on the one hand, it seems like chaos. On the other hand, maybe this is the clean slate that the mayor needs. Uh, both. Um, you know, this is unprecedented in modern times to see this many departures in a short period of time. It is absolutely a moment of chaos in the city government, but uh, there's indications that in some ways the mayor is going to wind up with an administration that is sort of more along the lines of what he should have begun with without all the sort of crony hires and old friends that he brought in and complicated chain of command stuff that he orchestrated by putting in a deputy mayor for public safety who was sort of meddling in the police department and doing different things. So um, I think it is a, a real crisis moment, but also it is a moment for the mayor to refresh, to put some real professionals into place. One of the biggest moment questions for is, to refresh can family anybody court. in from the outside who they might want to recruit, or is it all going to be internal promotions at this point? Am I really listening to what you're, you, 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 like, this is normal? A guy who has been in office for 1,012 days and he's indicted with five counts, hasn't been proven guilty. And he's getting rid of the people that actually were investigated or raided, but he was indicted. How, how can we even this, you know, consider a normal conversation, which is yeah. going on with a guy who obviously has at least given some hint that he's corrupt, that he's done things, accepted things that he shouldn't have. Or as Ingrid, his right hand said, she said, well, we're not completely clean, but you know, there's a little bit of us that's, that's a little thievery or, or at least we're doing something. I can't understand it. He's got 448 days left till December 31st of 2025. If he makes it, um, I, I just don't, you know, the city's not going to get better. It has not, he, he had his full team. I, I, I mean, if you have your full team of the most competent people, the administration that he was allowed to hire after the people trusted him and he screwed it up, this is a royal screw up. We haven't seen, I was telling, yeah, they talking in the green room, and I was telling some other people that I can't understand. This is the worst incompetent, inept administration that now may turn out to be corrupt. Also, how can we just be normalizing this? I mean, and and it's a Democrat actually saying, "Oh, it's a black well, you man. Know, he's got to be, uh, you know, he's got to go through the process and they get a day in court." Yeah, but in the meantime, New York has to run with a person who's trusted. I don't know who in in the right mind would be talking to him or getting favors from him. He's, on the, he's being watched all the time. Well, what, what about the role of Governor Hochul here? Because we know that she has asked for changes. I think that was actually her language at City Hall. The mayor sort of downplayed the power the, in this uh, country. <laughs> and, and, you know, has to sign off on personnel decisions at City Hall. But clearly she's exerting some influence here. Well, two things. One, she's exerting influence. That's clear. Two, she has the power to remove him. So she's got plenty of leverage, right? Uh, to this idea that the mayor is saying that all of these departures are not related to the investigations is obviously laughable. Um, he is trying to save face, but at this point he needs to just sort of acknowledge that he's having this sort of clean house, refresh moment. You mentioned one person who hasn't left yet, which is a senior advisor, Ingrid Lewis Martin, the top advisor of the mayor, who has had her devices seized and is under investigation. So that's one person who not only is still under investigation and, and the tightest person with the mayor, but also is someone who we know has very often gotten to veto or sign off on so many of the decisions coming mm -hmm. through City Hall. So if Eric Adams is going to have a reset moment here, bring the very well-respected Maria Torres Springer in as first deputy mayor, is there still going to be problems with that decision-making process at City Hall where with we know that his woman. top advisor has often meddled with her own politics and her own thinking about Eric Adams' politics in a lot of exactly. those Exactly. He has 448 days exactly. left his last day if he remains. So what they're talking, how people are accepting these jobs as, as if they're going to do something, he didn't do it in a, again. It's 1,012 days. Check my math to see if that's what he's been in office. How do you expect him to do anything? And, and with Governor Hochul, She's a joke. She's just a joke. She has the power. She's consulting. She's making it appear that she's spoken to black leaders. She's done this. She's done that. Telling people, telling it all. It's the, you know, the, the bochinche, because it's all bochinche about Hakeem Jeffries yeah. actually saying, oh, he should be allowed. No, he shouldn't be allowed. <laughs> well, Hakeem is worried about his own skin and becoming speaker. I find it really insulting and racist that black folks are saying, because he's black and you, you're, you can't take him out. 
Andrew Cuomo. That's it. Reverse racism. With anything. He saw that he actually, and I'm not defending Andrew Cuomo here. Just on the fact, and I was one of the people on this very set that I called for his resignation. And, the, and it winds up, what bothers me is that Andrew Cuomo was never charged with anything. He had enough sense to love the state as much. Maybe you could don't agree with him. But he resigned because he couldn't function. Not one, not one indictment. He's got five, and this guy doesn't see it that he can run and people defending him. And, and I'm surprised at the black leadership. I don't think it's a full black community of New York City. The black leadership protecting one. I think it's racist. There you go. Well, thank, thank you, you Hershey. I like your voice, Hershey. I like it. <laughs> and you know, we said that some of these folks, now most of whom have departed, could be indicted themselves, right? There may be much to come. And there was an indictment this week of this guy, Mohammed Bahi, who worked for the mayor for witness tampering and destroying evidence. I don't know how much damage that is going to inflict on the mayor. That seemed almost to be sort of tangential to his case. Well, but we also see in those charges allegations that he had been in touch with the mayor about illegal schemes. So I think we're more at the beginning of things here than even yeah. the middle. Uh, we know there's yeah. these other investigations swirling around the Banks brothers and others, and you go down the list. Um, more phones recently seized. So uh, this is probably going to get worse for the mayor before he has any chance of it getting better. And, and that could lead to new calls for his resignation. All right, you guys hold it there. We got much more to talk about. I will be back in just a couple minutes. Stay with us. New York One baseball playoff coverage is sponsored by Empire City Casino. Excitement comes standard with the Honda Accord. And so does a turbocharged engine. Sophisticated. High tech. Style that enhances functionality. Stand out with the Honda Accord. From Honda, the most awarded brand in car and driver 10 best history. Contact your Honda dealer today or shop online. to the Allied Injury Group podcast, where we have legal professionals standing by to give you a free consultation when you call. I'm your host, Katie, along here with David, and today we're talking accidents. Katie, we want our viewers to know they can get a free consultation with answers to their specific accident questions by calling the number below or by going to alliedinjurygroup.com. So what happens if you've been injured in an accident that was not your fault? Just pick up the phone and call us right now. Katie, we get calls on all kinds of accidents, car accidents, motorcycle accidents, slip and falls, work accidents. One big question is, how much is my case potentially worth? You know, David, every case is different, and I encourage all of our viewers, if you or someone you know has been injured in an accident that wasn't their fault, and you don't have an attorney, call for a free consultation now. 800-317-9750. That's 800-317-9750. The fall holiday weekend is just around the corner, and it's the perfect time to dare to compare. You've seen the action. America loves it so much that Bob's is opening two new stores on October 11th. Dare to compare at a Bob's near you. The Outsiders is the Tony Award winner for Best Musical. Critics have called it more pulse pounding than anything on Broadway, and the best new musical of the season. The Outsiders on Broadway. Get tickets today. This portion of the news is brought to you by Hyundai. There's never been a better time to test drive that Hyundai you've always wanted. Hyundai, there's joy in every journey. Visit HyundaiUSA.com today. Welcome back to Inside City Hall. I'm once again joined by my politics panel, Ben Max, and New York One political commentator, Herson Barrero. So let's talk about the race for mayor, whether that's the Democratic primary next year, or if Eric Adams is out of office before then, we're talking about a special election at some point between now and then. There's been a lot of reporting on Letitia James, the state attorney general, and how she is now appears to be seriously considering running for mayor. We know, of course, Andrew Cuomo may be interested in running for mayor. I mean, a Tish James, Andrew Cuomo mayoral race would really be something. Right, a little while before we came on, yeah. the, the New York Times you know, sort of popped the story with that headline, which is very intriguing. From where we sit today, I, I continue to 
think neither of them will run, even in a special election, but I've been wrong before. I didn't think Andrew Cuomo would resign as governor. So, you know, uh, we'll see. But um, a special election would be especially messy, probably, unless there's a real effort to sort of clear a lot of the field for someone like Letitia James, which obviously there's some discussion of. Yeah. I have a hard time seeing her wanting to jump into that fray and that potential race unless she knew that Andrew Cuomo wasn't going to run and the field was was cleared for her. Uh, what One of the things we're seeing right now, though, whether it's with Eric Adams or with some of this Cuomo buzz and the Cuomo versus Tish mm -hmm. animosity is a lot of sort of Democrats sniping at each other mm -hmm. here with 25 days to go before a massive election. So this exactly. looks really bad right now, no matter what we're talking New about. New York here. looks ugly. Democrats in New York look ugly. And I'm gonna say, Tish James is really smart. She'll be 65, sorry Tish, happy birthday. October 18th, she turned 65. She's nobody's fool. She's proven that. She's she's nobody's spring chicken. In 2022, I remind all of you out there that in 2022, there was an attempt to run against Hochul. They couldn't raise the money for that position. She's at a great spot. She is the top black elected official, happens to be a woman. She has national prominence. She is acknowledged as the person who actually prosecuted and will probably get a conviction, a, a partial conviction on Donald Trump. And, and I don't think that she walks over there to run. I don't think, no way, forgive me, Tish, I don't think she wants to get into this mess. She's a good person. She's liked everywhere. She's liked by neighbor. This is a bochinche between um, Eddie Castell, uh, Luis Miranda, and Roberto Ramirez, who always wanted to have this. Pro I'll, I'll call you out because I know that they're, they're throwing this out to keep her alive. And of course, Governor Hoka would say, to run, Tish, run, run. She's frightened of a mayor, in my opinion, Mayor Cuomo. Uh, uh, Andrew Cuomo will be the 111th mayor uh, of New York City. You watch whether it's a special election. Or in Jan or in, I, I've said this before, it's not the first time, I'll be wrong. Uh, you know, Errol takes me up on these things, we'll see. Because come if, if they go through the regular cycle, uh, he will win a primary. Tish James wouldn't have to give up her position as attorney general to run e in either of those elections. So that's an important note here, right? Yeah, but, if, if but, if she, loses, reason, but yeah. if she loses, she looks bad. She looks bad, but again, continue to be attorney general. But yes, you don't... Uh, but I think we've seen, whether it's through especially Bill de Blasio's mayoralty and now into Eric Adams is this reminder to a lot of these people that being mayor of New York City is extremely difficult. Uh, you can shoot yourself in the foot in many ways as both of them have recently, but um, I don't know that either of them again wants to be getting into that position even if they knew they could win. You're talking about being a Governor Cuomo with a, ma a, a Mayor Cuomo with a Governor Hochul holding all the state funding and all of that over your head like he did to Bill de Blasio. I mean, it's, it, he this did, is a tough job your with point, a power imbalance. Your point is well taken, except that he did 11 budgets. He knows how to, how to pull the strings, how to put pressure on governors. He would take the 51 members of the city council and work it out with them. He'd probably give them all they want. He'd be better off. But the problem that we're forgetting here is the mess that Eric Leroy Adams is going to leave this city. And there were moderate voters in a special election, Republicans and everybody votes. You know, the majority, I know progressives think they're the hot thing, and the DSA, you know, Democratic Social America, uh, you all don't control the vote, and you all don't elect that. That's been proven. So I think that moderates would elect an Andrew Cuomo because they know he's a bully, he's not going to be pushed over, he's going to do what needs to be done, and he'll get... You know the police in the right in the right place, and that's what you're talking about. Now. It's not the elite, it's the Democrats, and all these people trying to maneuver different things. I believe New Yorkinos are tired of all these politicians running rings around them and not respecting the fact that they got a job because they begged for one. So you talk about New York being messy uh, a month out from election. Now we know just a week before the election, Donald Trump is going to be here in New York at Madison Square Garden. That ain't holding messy. A rally, which seems counterintuitive because obviously we're not a swing state and will play almost no role in the presidential election. Just about 30 seconds left. But what do you think is going on here with Trump at MSG? Trump wants to be loved by New York. He knows it's the media capital. He wants all that attention. There are some really significant house races in the New York area, mm -hmm. the New York media market, that will be very important to the future of the country. And if he wins the presidency, having a Republican House majority could be key. 
So those are a couple quick. If he went to the Bronx, let him go at Madison Square Garden. Nobody paid attention in the Bronx and all these people trying. Don't try to prevent. Don't give him more air by trying to prevent them or having uh, Madison Square Garden consent. Go there and then protest. Yeah. You know, bring out if you really don't like him. But, you know, you can't. You don't have a right to cancel somebody because they, I don't like him either. I'll go over there and boo him. All right, Herson Barrera, Ben Max, thank you guys so much for joining us tonight. That is going to do it for tonight's show. Thanks for watching, everybody, and have a great evening. We will see you the next time on Inside City Hall.